I think it's still morning, so good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, first, uh, I want to thank to uh, Kyoto University uh, School of Public Health uh, for giving me my uh, this opportunity uh, for this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, it's my great honor to be here. Uh, in fact, this is my first oral presentation in international conference, so I really appreciate it. So today my topic is uh, modeling temporal and spatial variability of traffic-related air pollution in Taipei Metropolitan, Taiwan. Uh, uh, already then use migration models for PN2.5. Uh, first, uh, in the beginning, I will brief uh, the background and the introduction of my topic, PN2.5, and its related uh, health impact, and uh, the land use regression model, of course. Uh, next, I will uh, uh, introduce m uh, my previous study. It's about, uh, uh, also about PN2.5 rule models in tai Taipei. Uh, it's a, a long-term uh, rural model, and uh, its result and uh, its lim limitations uh, for improve Im for improve uh, 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 for apply apply a new I think it's a new technology for a small sensor, and uh, last I uh, will uh, uh, give my future work about. Model with our temporal resolution uh, is uh, my topic today, and and the summary summary make some make summary of today's uh, presentation. Uh, first, what's PM two point five? PM is particle meter. Uh, it's mixture of starry particles and the liquid dropper uh, found in the air. Uh, this is a definition by the US EPA. Uh, so you can <coughs> see the picture. Uh, this is uh, all kinds of particles uh, from the bigger, like uh, beach sand, uh, which we can see in our naked eyes. And PN10 like this, and the PN2.5 like this. It's about size, right? So um, PN2.5 is also known as uh, fine particle meters. Uh, it consists of particle less than 2.5 micrometer in diameter. Uh, that are uh, suspended in a uh, atmosphere. So uh, mm, li this uh, distinguishes by the uh, by the particle size. Uh, due, into, due to the, uh, the features in, uh, of PN2.5, it's a small size, so it can easily enter a human body through respiratory bronchitis and uh, a belly, avail and uh, even it can penetrate to the blood. So what's the connection uh, uh, of our PN2.5 and the uh, health impact? PN2.5 right now is uh, 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 be seen as a dominant form of air pollution and uh, can cause of ad adverse health impact. Uh, includes, which includes uh, respir respiratory and cardiovascular mobility uh, mortality from cardiovascular and respiratory uh, disease, and uh, also um, mortality from lung cancer. Even uh, low birth rate, it can cause <coughs> low birth rate, uh, short life expectancy, and the population burden of disease. So PN25 seems is a uh, huge issue for our life or our health. So many, uh, many countries uh, government have uh, do some 
uh, policy or some management of all this pollution. Uh, uh, like Taiwan, Taiwan EPA has established air quality monitoring station. Uh, uh, 20 are lo located in North tai Taiwan. Uh, this area is our capital city. I include the Taipei and the new, new Taipei city nearby and the uh, Kilo country. So what difficulties we are facing? We are facing uh, uh, these two kinds of uh, issue. It's about spatial coverage because uh, the, the limited number of the station, this number is not enough for the spatial coverage. The location uh, and the location are not evenly distributed. This will cause some uh, problem of uh, uh, epidemiological study. And next, uh, the PM 2.5 have a feature uh, uh, as spatial variability. So right now, I, ep epidemiological study require highly accurate information regarding the spatial variability of PN2.5. So if we don't have enough spatial coverage of a monitor station, so this might be a potential problem. So how do, how do we solve this? There's, there are ways to capture within CTPM to by contrast. Uh, first, uh, we can use uh, of exposure identical variables. It's a very simple way to uh, find, a, find, find a surrogate, uh, something like if we are, we are focused on urban, urban area, uh, we can uh, we can look of, of some traffic variables like length of road, like distance of the nearest road, something like that. A second, uh, we can use a method, uh, 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 interpolation method <coughs> such as Kriging. Uh Even we can use a more complicated model like air dispersion model, something such like I three model. Air mode model, uh, CMAP model, it was uh, frequently used in the uh, US and uh, also in Taiwan. Uh, the last one is uh, my topic, uh, it's about the use regression rule models. So let, let me talk more about rule models. A uh, rule model, uh, you may not be familiar for, for hearing this, these models. Uh, Rule model first uh, application for air pollution mapping was introduced in a, a project uh, named Small Area Variations in Air Quality and Health, the SARIA study. So uh, after the study, it became increasingly used in epidemiological study because the successful pioneer work in this project and the second, the developer in GIS, uh, not only the software, but also the uh, data, the, the geography data. So uh, right now, uh, after that, mainly adopted in a European North America study. Uh, right now, it's also in, uh, be increased number in SS study recently. Which include uh, Japan, Korea, China, even in Thailand, India. There were, uh, we we can find uh, some related study in SAR area. So then, smart or use GIS to compute the quantitative value of several predicted values for spatial buffer. This predict values uh, is like traffic, uh, land use, and or population density, something like that. This predict variable can be as uh, uh, as an, an independent variable in a model, in a linear model. Uh, another way, air pollution concentration we measured is uh, 
take as a dependent variable in uh, linear models. So uh, once we establish a multiple lin linear regression model, we can use this model uh, to calculate the concentration. This concentration can be determined determined for any other location without a monitor station or a measurement area. So uh, my previous study is uh, developed, uh, established uh, a PM2.5 rule model uh, in Taipei. Uh, this model is for the long-term long -term exposure. So this table uh, shown uh, the final model result. So I, as you can see, uh, this final model includes uh, six variable. Uh, I distinguish into three category. The uh, first one is traffic emission. It's a uh, it's a uh, include include the rural area, uh, distant to major roads. The second category is. Uh, Industry related is industry and then use uh, of uh, within uh, 500 meters area. So that's why the others uh, construction, uh, residential, and uh, river areas. So the final area and the coefficient is underlying. So how after uh, we establish this rule model, we can apply, apply this for the, uh, make some uh, est estimation about the exposure, PN2.5 exposure in the type city. Let us, uh, let me take an uh, example. If we have a person uh, which is named A, uh, who lives in, in this area, the surrounding uh, area of a nearby road is uh, 250 meters square. The distance to the nearest major road is 30 meters. Uh, no nearby factory or construction area. Uh, the area of nearby residential land is uh, 0.5 kilometers square. Area of a river uh, will be uh, 3.5 kilometers square. So obviously, maybe he lived a uh, very um, a little rural, rural countryside in a city. So uh, we use our our models to estimate the uh, PM2.5 exposure and uh, annual estimate annual exposure. Uh, the concentration will be uh, 6.6 for uh, microgram per cubic meter. Let's look at another example. A uh, person B who lives in this place, uh, surrounding our area of nearby road, have a much higher uh, 4,000 meters square. The distance to the near major road is only two meters. So he lives in uh, with traffic and uh, a uh, major road uh, just nearby. Areas of a nearby construction, unfortunately, they have a, a construction area, 1,700 meter square. Uh, area of nearby industry, uh, 6,000 meters square. Area of nearby residential land is 0 0.6 kilometers square. Area of a nearby river, only two kilometers square. So what's his exposure? Uh, it will get a result of almost 15 micrograms per cubic meter. So these two extreme examples that uh, uh, represent uh, the, the use of our lens uh, models, lens regression models can uh, represent the spatial variation in the city. This is a, a very, very, very important feature in, in a, a PN2.5 concentration uh, of the spatial distribution. 
So, however, this, this model has limitations. Uh, language regression uh, needs large input, still need, needs large input requirement. It uh, can take a, as a spatial resolution. Uh, it was suggest of a 14 to 18 sampling location. Uh, it's also challenging, faces a challenge for obtaining an accurate sampling point explanation rate. It's called a spurt. The rate, that means the rate of sampling points with a, with a reasonable predicted concentration to the total number of sampling points. So uh, back to my previous study, uh, we only used uh, 20, 20 measurement size to uh, develop uh, our, our raw model. So this is a, a limitation about spatial resolution. Uh, next, uh, it's not a, it, it's a long-term exposure, not a short-term. So uh, it's a, uh, about short-term exposure, it can not be detailed. It uh, can be not cannot be uh, make some detailed exposure assessment. It's a it's a relative uh, of, of temporal resolution. So uh, some exposure may vary with time. So if we just uh, just only if we only can uh, uh, make an uh, estimate uh, from long term. So. This is a, a, a major limitation of our uh, <coughs> the models. So how we uh, I need to find uh, solutions about this limitation. So right now, fortunately, uh, the technology is uh, progressing, and with uh, advanced in sensing and the computing computing technology. Uh, we can uh, use a dense deployment of a, a local station for air quality monitoring. Uh, several smart, smart cities have de deployed a system for real-time air quality monitoring. Uh, like Chicago, they have a, a project named Array, Array of Things. Uh, in European Amsterdam, they have a smart city project. In German, Darmstadt, is, which is a, a technology city, they have a DASSENSE project. Uh, uh, I am very proud. Taipei, we also have this uh, uh, network called Taipei Air Bus. So uh, uh, right now, we can use uh, open data set, Taipei Air Bus data set. Uh, in Taipei, in the new Taipei city, we have uh, uh, 40, 000, uh, 453 monitoring devices. Uh, they have uh, deployed in, mostly in school, elementary school, and the public building. Uh, the, uh, they have three sensors, including PM2.5, and uh, temperature and uh, humid humidity sensors. Their sampling rate is every five minutes can get a uh, variance. So, uh, that's, uh, that's a very, very uh, useful data and uh, uh, very, very, it's very important. And it's benefits of this data, we can enhance the distribution density and the coverage of PM2.5 modularly in the cities. And we can ensure the quality because they are uh, the measurement result as uh, all the devices are made with identical components from the same source. So the quality can be uh, rich specific level. Uh, next, uh, uh, they can provide a reliable PN2.5 measurements that facilitate continuous air quality monitoring and uh, other advanced data analysis. So, we can say this is a uh, big data we can use. So uh, we can combine uh, my uh, combine this big data and uh, my uh, previous work. We can do something new and something maybe something novel. 
So uh, that's uh, my future work is uh, back to my topic. Uh, I will build in hourly Lua models for PN 2.5 by using high resolution monitoring to better capture exposure at different times and the location in Taipei. So uh, my expense expected benefits is uh, are uh, establish a uh, Lua model with an hourly <coughs> is shortened shortened temporal resolution. They can be more accurate and detailed, make more uh, accurate and detailed exposure estimation. Uh, with activity diary, uh, this is uh, usually be used in, in some uh, epidemiological study or GPS locker, uh, some other technology, uh, it will be able to capture personal exposure. So it improved if it epidemiological study focusing on uh, acute health effect because uh, uh, this can be done by uh, short-term rule models. So finally, I summarize uh, uh, my presentation. Uh, as right now, we have a, a routine monitor modeling station, which is very expensive uh, compared, compared uh, uh, instrument. And in the other way, we can use modeling, like uh, this version model, if you can get a very com uh, complete uh, data set, we can run the models. But uh, I choose uh, in the media, uh, use the rule model. They are Red, red, relatively simple for use uh, compared to the dispersion model. And right now we have a uh, small sense and big data uh, in Taiwan or, or even in, in Taipei City. So I combine these two tools and data. I can um, make some uh, new rural models for the future use and uh, as a useful tools for uh, exposure assessment. So that's my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.